Hi again then guys and welcome to another instalment of the Beards and Cars podcast, a podcast which of course you can grab in its audio only form via the link down below on SoundCloud. And for this instalment I wanted to talk about something which of course is very topical at the moment, Gran Turismo 7. We had its announcement trailer a couple of days ago along with the PS5 announcement stream of course, both of which I'm pretty hyped for. And I wanted to use this episode to actually kind of just get our thoughts and feelings out there, because for the last couple of days, I've been focusing in, and I know many of you have as well, on the analytics of it, if you will. Looking at stuff like the new cars, the new circuits, graphics, time of day, tuning, all this kind of technical stuff, but we might not have given ourselves a moment to actually sit back and think, what do I feel about this? Am I hyped for it? Which seems like an obvious question. What do you maybe think is something to be concerned about in the trailer? Stuff that you think looks good in the trailer? Now, for me personally, there's nothing that immediately comes to mind that I'm concerned about on this. I know that many people have been concerned about, like, oh, is this more a GT Sport 2 rather than a GT7? I could understand some of those sentiments, uh, kind of GT Sport shell shock <laughs> for some of us, where when you see some similar cars and similar tracks carried over, it might not necessarily give you some memories that you want to have. Because, like it or not, a lot of people do voice disappointment about GTS. So that's a completely fair worry to have, because that is the track record now. They've made that game. It is out there in the ether. Now, I'm not actually worried about that for a number of reasons. One, I think that as much as Kaz probably enjoyed GT Sport in terms of being kind of his little pet project, I don't think he would necessarily make the same mistake twice. He also arguably can't really afford to as a businessman because you can be as passionate as you want, but if you make enough bad business moves, and when I say bad business moves, I'm not talking about how many game sales you get. I'm talking about just the future of a fandom. That is something that's far more important than how many sales you get. Because, again, anyone who is not a businessman, who doesn't own their own business, will not understand this, but the most important and the most beneficial thing that you can do as a business owner is not get sales, it's to plan for the future to create a brand which will endure, potentially even beyond you. And that, of course, is what any good businessman or producer would want to do. Now, getting sales on GT Sport does not make it a good game. I've talked about that before, so we're not going to get into that now. GT7 will doubtless get a ton of sales, and to be honest, the only thing which I think is going to hold that back is the fact that it's on a new console. And of course, that's a double-edged sword, because the great thing about having it on a new console is it allows the game to be bigger, better, more powerful, etc. than ever before. And that's all fantastic. The downside is, upgrading to new hardware is always expensive, especially when it's not, for instance, the slimline version. You know, I don't even know if there will be a slim Chances are there will be, there has been in the past, but my point is, it's the brand new thing. So of course it's going to be expensive. We don't know exactly how expensive yet, but it could be anywhere from like five to six hundred dollars, probably at least. That's a pretty big commitment, even for an adult, let alone a younger person who's got to, for instance, earn some pocket money to get that or rely on their parents to get it for them. And that's one of the reasons why, and I know some people probably get annoyed about me keep plugging it, but I'm doing it for a reason. That's why I'm doing the giveaway, because having that kind of money will mean all the difference for somebody who can actually afford suddenly to just buy a PS5 without any effort at all. So again, if you haven't checked that out already, then please do so, because it's completely legit. I mean what I say in that video. As far as my thoughts on the trailer specifically for GT7, I actually really liked it all round. It's only an announcement trailer, so you could argue they didn't even need to show as much as they did. It's in effect just a teaser, really, but I think that it was a very good choice to show as much as they did, because if you think about it, we saw a ton of new cars, many of which were very, very highly requested. Carrera GT, 911 GT1, Porsche 917, etc. And also returning older original circuits like Trial Mountain. They're going through the, you know, fan boxes and ticking them all very well. You have the great graphics, of course, you expect that kind of stuff from Gran Turismo. The lighting, the reflections look fantastic. Uh, somebody actually on the Discord server for this channel 
which you should join if you haven't already. It's completely free. There's like 750 of us on there now. That comparison that somebody made between the Aston DB11 in the GT Sport garage compared to that same Aston Martin in the GT7 garage shown in the trailer, the graphics are night and day. It's a huge difference. Some people might not think that it is, but it is. It is a big difference, especially when it comes to the lighting and the reflections in particular. So yeah, overall, I would say I'm very hyped for the new game. Of course, my level of hype is going to be slightly different to, for instance, you as a viewer. Maybe if you are also somebody who likes to make videos yourself, then you might understand what I'm talking about here. But if you're just, for instance, a, a normal everyday gamer who just wants to play the game and has no thoughts of creating content for it, well, then you can just go into it as a pure experience. That's what I used to do with every game up until GT6. Since then, of course, I'm always thinking half and half. Half as a consumer and fan, and half as a business owner and content creator. So, of course, I am hyped on both fronts because, of course, it's going to benefit the channel. Why wouldn't it? But then, even as a fan, I'm really looking forward to the trailer because... To me, I don't recall looking forward to GT Sport as much as I am for GT7. Now, I may be mistaken there. I certainly was looking forward to it. I enjoyed playing the beta. I enjoyed the demo. I really enjoyed, I believe it was in 2016, going to that event in London where we had our first hands-on look at it and actually played the game. Still the only time I've ever played it on a wheel. <laughs> and I, in effect, did like a, a live event race with like 15 other players. That was fun. And I was looking forward to it. I don't recall looking forward to it as much as I am now, though, with this game. And I think it's probably partially to do with the fact that it's a more traditional entry, which is what I always wanted from GT Sport anyway, but also the fact that it is on this new console. And I am looking forward to seeing what the PS5 can do. Now, as far as other things which you could, you know, postulate about more than specifically prove, and what I mean by that is there are certain things which are in the trailer. You don't have to speculate about it. There is a Carrera GT, for instance. There is Trial Mountain. There is tuning, etc. As far as stuff which is more, you know, behind the scenes conjecture, I'm actually really keen to see how the new class system is going to work in practice. Because having both in conjunction, you know, the end classes plus the group classes for racing, plus the point system, that's never been done before. It was kind of planned for GT Sport, as I said a couple of days ago, but it was never implemented. So it seems to me that the way that system's going to work is going to be pretty good, actually. And I know that many people won't like <laughs> this comparison, but I believe it is one that needs to be made. It's similar to what Forza does. And when I think of the Forza method, I always go back and think of Forza 4, because Forza 4 is one of the best times that I've seen this implemented. And for those who are unfamiliar with Forza, the way that game's class system worked was super simple, but really effective. And basically, cars went from class F all the way up to class A, then you had a class S above that, then you had R3, R2, R1, and U, which later changed to X. So, very similar to what Gran Turismo later did, but the way that worked, and the way in which I think it will probably work in GT7, and I'm really keen, as I said, to see if it does work this way, is that within those classes in Forza, the cars had a PI point system, the performance index. Those points were within the parameters of that particular class. So, for instance, the, I think it was A category, went from 500 PI points to 600 PI points. Then anything over that, 601, became S-Class. And then S-Class was 600 to 700. Then even in the racing classes, and this changed because originally Forza just had R3, and then that was it. It was just all race cars in that class, R2, all faster race cars, R1, etc. Prototypes. Later, they made that even more finessed such as in the fourth game, where R3 would cover, you know, like GT3s, maybe some touring car kind of stuff. Then R2 was more like FXXs, Zonda Rs, some real race cars like GT500s, that kind of thing. And then, of course, R1 is LMPs, Group Cs, some experimental kind of stuff. 
And then X was basically like if you de-restricted a prototype and had like a thousand horsepower or tuned up some crazy hypercar to a ridiculous level of performance like a Veyron Supersport or a Venom GT, something which couldn't really compete in that class, but just because of its straight line power, it was good. That was a great system and it worked really, really well. Now, as always, there were certain ways to exploit it, but generally speaking, it was very good. And I've actually been a, a vocal proponent of the performance points in Gran Turismo. I think it's a great system, and even though there are some exceptions, let's be honest, it's not really difficult to make those adjustments. Because if you think back, to, for instance, to GT6, there were only a handful of cars that didn't fit into those classes correctly. The Red Bull Junior was the classic example. It had like 730 PP points, which is ridiculous. That's like 20 higher than a Chaparral 2J, and it did not stand a chance against that. But then you have something like a, a Mazda RX500, or a Ford Focus RS, or a Suzuki GSX-R4. They were always OP because they were too good for the points that they had. That is not something that's difficult to fix. You don't need to restructure the entire system, just make those vehicles have a higher point value. Stock, and more importantly, when tuned. Then it just makes it more accurate. You have to detune them even more for them to compete. It's basically the same as what real racing does. For instance, in Super GT, they add ballast if a car is overly fast, and they keep adding more if it's still fast. It's not really a complicated method, but it works, so they could easily do that in the game. So I'm keen to see, for instance, and this ties directly into what I've said before, in, let's say, N700, currently in GT Sport, you've got uh, a Hellcat Charger and a Pagani Huayra. That makes no sense. However, in this new system, you could have an N700 car such as the Hellcat, which would probably have a fairly modest PP point, because it's big and it's heavy. It's not overly good through corners, it's just a straight line machine. So yes, it's powerful, but the points would doubtless be far lower than, for instance, that Pagani Huayra. Or, if you were to tune up a Viper, for instance, to 700 horsepower, that's a very different animal to a 700 horsepower Hellcat. So again, I think that the system's going to work very well. Because at the moment, there are definitely ways that you can game the system. There are certain Porsches. For instance, the 911s of the different generations tend to be some of the most OP vehicles in the N classes, from N300, N400, certainly N500. This new system, I think, will make things a little bit more fair. Now, you'll still have cars that run away. I suspect that the Porsches will still be very good. Doubtless, rotary engine vehicles will always be very good, because that's the way they work. But... I think it'll be a good system. I'm pretty keen on seeing that. As far as other stuff which I'm hyped for, well, of course, the tuning is always going to be a massive part of what I'm looking forward to. I'm really hoping that we have Special Stage Route X in the game. And I know that a lot of you don't care about that track, but chances are, if you've been a day one subscriber since the Gran Turismo 6 Potato Cam days, you know exactly why I want that track. Of course, I want Route X. Especially if, once again, and I mentioned this before, if we get that voice chat back, I really want the voice chat option. So many people don't seem to care about that, but I really do. It's so much more efficient than the type box, which takes forever, and it means that you can talk to people during the loading screen, you can talk in the race, you can talk in the... the um, the waiting room, in, in effect. You don't have to join some stupid little party or, a, you know, a Discord chat with your friends. You can just use it in the game as you would want to. I love being able to talk to people. It's so much fun. I mean, I do a lot of talking on the channel, and I love to chat to people who, as I said, recognize my work or are a fan of the tuning or just want to talk about cars. Of course, I love the banter, doing stupid noises and vocal impressions trolling lobbies even, people who don't know who I am. I love all that kind of stuff, and it's so much fun. Sometimes, in fact, in Gran Turismo 6, I would just join a lobby purely to do that. I didn't even care about the racing. <laughs> it was just so fun to me. So I know that I'm one of the rarer people who put so much value on the voice chat, but I really do hope that they include that, and I suspect that they probably will. I think they probably will, because it's not as professional of a game from what we've seen. They certainly have not put much uh, emphasis on sport mode at all, although I suspect it will have, of course, the esports integration. But I think that brings us to another interesting point in the discussion. 
What do you guys think will happen as far as that esports? Of course, the FIA GTC stuff, the Nations Cup, all that, Manufacturers Cup, that will continue, I mean, without question. I am keen to see, though, how will that affect GT Sport? Because Gran Turismo's history has kind of been to shut down the servers a little bit too quickly. And I think that that would be a very big mistake for GT Sport, because... As much as I'm going to love leaving it behind and playing GT7, I think that there are a lot of people who would be really disappointed about that, because maybe they can't afford a PS5. Maybe they just don't want to spend that kind of money yet. Maybe they want to wait for it to drop a little bit, or you know, most likely can't afford it. They need that online connectivity. They don't necessarily need Nations Cup going on every week, but they still need sport mode, they need those lobbies, because GT6 was shut down way too fast. And there are some people, myself included, to this day, who are still annoyed about how quickly they shut that down. And the proof is in the pudding, because on this channel, I still put out reviews for cars in GT6, and they sometimes get the same views that a GT Sport car review will. It clearly shows... People still love that game. So on this occasion, not for my own sake, because let's be honest, I couldn't care less if GT Sports servers are up because I don't use them all that much anyway, but for those people who do enjoy it, I don't want them to lose that. At least not for a while. Keep it for like six months, at least. A full year might be a stretch, but six months I think would be more than enough time for a lot of those people to save up or come into a financial position where they can afford, plus with the console prices coming down a little bit, to actually move on to GT7 and then probably play GT Sport a whole lot less. And I think that for those who have fiercely defended GT Sport, and there are certainly some people who do, and if you enjoy it, you know, fair enough, good for you, I think that the undeniable proof for the future is going to be looking back and seeing how many people after GT Sports release are still playing, or after GT7's release, I should say, are still playing GT Sport. Because I think the drop-off is going to be colossal. And that speaks volumes. Because as I said, tons of us, tons of us, go back to play the older games. GT1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and even 6... I just don't think as many people are going to still be wanting to go back to GT Sport, because once those servers go down, you've got nothing. There is nothing else in the game that gives you a reason to go back for more, because the career mode, as we've said before, is an afterthought. Why would you need to go back to it when you've got GT7? And I think that for GT7, that's brilliant news, because in effect, what they'll have done is they'll have taken everything that was great about GT Sport, and don't get me wrong, there's plenty to love. It is a great game. It has by far the best graphics of any Gran Turismo game. I would say the most realistic physics, etc. Scapes are unmatched. There's plenty to love, and there's even some pretty nice, unique cars and tracks. But GT7 will just be so much more of a complete experience from what we've seen that GT Sport will have just no merit at all, especially once Sport Mode is carried over. And once the esports begins in this new PS5 era, I think that will be the ultimate axe to the head of GTS. Some people might go back and play it, but as soon as those servers go down, like I said, there'll be no reason to. What then as far as circuits? Well, of course, we know some confirmations. As I said, I really hope to have Route X in there, and that's for 50-50 reasons, to be honest. One is because I love racing on Route X. I know some people don't get that, but trust me, you will very rarely see the kind of close competition on any other track that you do on Route X. You can have an entire field of 20 cars finishing within one second of each other. You will never see that happen on the Nürburgring, because it's physically impossible. So, I love it. I love the racing, of course I love the tuning, squeezing that extra one mile an hour out of a car can mean the difference between a win and a loss. I love it. It's a fantastic lobby for having fun. But, as far as the rest of the circuits... I do love the fact, and again this ties into the clear homages that they've made to the older games, Kaz himself said that he noticed a number of the Nations Cup finalists playing those older games like GT4 etc, and appreciating that, oh, these kids even, who weren't alive or were too young at the time to play them, they actually still love these older games. I'm glad that that gave him pause, because as great as it is to look to the future as a creator, Sometimes you do need to look to the past, because nostalgia is a very important thing. 
And when it's done well, it can be an incredible marketing tool and an incredible tool for enjoyment as well. And you can clearly see that they really were going for the GT4 homages in this game. I mean, the trailer opened with a Ford GT. The home menu is very clearly inspired by GT4. Some GT2 vibes in there for sure with the darker layout, but the shape of the menu with the world map, map kind of thing, very clearly GT4. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that pans out. And for those who maybe even didn't play GT4, that would be a pretty cool experience, I think. It might even encourage some people to go back and do that, which again, certainly wouldn't be a bad thing. That game never needed online racing to be fun, that's for sure. But as far as those tracks go, I think that it is cool to see that they are making more of an effort to bring those OG circuits back. Of course, Trial Mountain being confirmed, a possibility of a deep forest. I would actually love to see a Grand Valley, maybe slightly redesigned. But yeah, I think it would be cool. Certain tracks would probably have fairly hefty modifications to make them more realistic. But still, I think there's a lot of fun that could be had. Imagine, for instance, if we saw a return of like a special stage Route 5 or uh, Route 7 or uh, Route 11, even, which I doubt will happen. But I think of those, Route 5 is probably the most likely because it's such an OG fan favorite circuit. Imagine if that were to come back. And of course, as I've said before on the channel, and doubtless I'll say it again, we've only seen one trailer. You know, it's just the announcement trailer. So having that to go on means there's tons that we haven't seen yet. And that to me is one of the most exciting things because... We've had one trailer in a shorter and extended form, and already we've seen new cars, new tracks, better graphics, the hints of a time of day and possibly weather change, much more expansive career mode, fantastic menu, keeping some of the stuff that we love the most about GT Sport, like liveries and scapes, having stuff like the missions back, the driving school, the cafe, whatever that turns out to be, seemingly being able to gift cars possibly, and I definitely plan to make use of that. I want to start giving cars away for the livery competition to the winners. I've always wanted to do stuff like that because it makes it more of a tangible victory. And for those who are wondering, yes, of course the photo mode and definitely the livery competition will be including Gran Turismo 7. So I'm certainly stoked for that. <laughs> I guess it will have to become the Gran Turismo livery competition rather than GT Sport. I'm not sure exactly how we'll make the, the delineation between the two, but we'll, we'll deal with that when we get there. But um, but yeah, I'm keen to see how those tracks are integrated. I don't think that they're going to bring back all of the OG circuits. And one of the things that I do want to say in this video as well is, as much as I am hyped for it, as you can probably tell, as much as I know many of you are, we still need to not overhype ourselves. And I'm not trying to dampen the situation. I'm not making any specific complaint even about the trailer. I think it was, as I said, a great one. But I've been seeing some people make really outlandish comments. Like, oh, I hope it has 1,500 cars. I can categorically tell you it won't. <laughs> this game is not going to have 1,500 cars. It will be lucky to have 500 at launch. That's just realistic. It's going to have everything, pretty much, that GT Sport has, plus some new ones. Don't expect much more than that because you will be disappointed. And the reason why I say that is clear. The past proves what I'm saying. Not just in Gran Turismo, but Forza as well. Every time the game shifts to a new console, there's a drop in cars. Forza 5 was the first one on the newer Xbox, the car count dropped. Gran Turismo 3 was the new console after 2, the car count dropped massively. Then Gran Turismo 5 was the huge exception to the rule by jumping, but they had so much time in between, you know, GT4 and 5 for that to happen. Then GT Sport dropped significantly compared to GT6, and of course it's, let's just say, highly likely to happen again. Now, of course, I would love to be wrong. Imagine if we had 1,300, 1,500 cars, whatever, 100 circuits. I just don't think that's going to happen. Because GT Sport has been out for how long now? Like, two and a half years, maybe? Something like that. By the time this game comes out, it'll probably be around three years. That's a decent amount of time, but that's not enough time to make the game that big. Especially not with what we've been told by Kaz about each car taking six months. Polyphony has expanded for sure, but I still don't think they're as big as Turn 10. 
So I don't see them having that kind of expansion. Expansion, yes, and it'll be interesting to see how the updates work in this game. Will there be paid DLC, etc.? I would have no issue with that, especially if it means we can have bigger and better updates. But uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Ultimately, though, I think that's about it for what I wanted to discuss in my thoughts. There's, as I said, a ton to love, a ton to dissect in the trailer, some cool cars. Well, I don't need to go through everything again, I've mentioned it in the video. So tell me down below, what did you think? Are you hyped? Are you disappointed? Some people have seen some disappointment. Okay, I guess some people are never happy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, tell me your thoughts down below. Of course, if you haven't checked out my full breakdown videos of the entire trailer, talking about all of these things, all the new cars, then check out yesterday's video and the day before. They're both doing very well, they've got a ton of information in there that you might have missed. And of course, we'll be looking to the future. I'll still be covering the older Gran Turismo games, so don't worry about that. I think any of you who have been around on the channel for some time know that I never leave the older games behind. They might become rare, but they never get left behind. And uh, yeah, things will just move up and get bigger and better for the channel. Of course, when GT7 does drop, I'm aiming to get it on release. I will be doing that giveaway. As I said, $1,000, but only if we reach the goal, of course, and we're not even close to it yet. So it really does rely on people sharing the video. But when the game comes out, I plan to do money setups, tune setups, possibly speed tunes, of course circuit tunes, maybe some drift tunes, and of course, plenty of car reviews. We'll have to see if there's a demo. There might be. We'll have to see if there's a beta. I think there probably won't be, but we'll have to see. And ultimately, we'll see how it pans out. We still don't have a release date, of course, but... Uh, it's pretty exciting, I think. I'm looking forward to the future of Gran Turismo. And that's something which I haven't said in two and a half years. <laughs> but uh, yeah, tell me your thoughts down below. Be sure to check out that giveaway video because it really does rely on all of you checking it out. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.